This podcast has been brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. Help us spread the light of prophetic guidance to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Make a small donation at seekersguidance.org forward slash donate. For as little as $10 a month, you can help people find life-changing guidance. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alayhi wa sahbihi wa alayhi wa sallam wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, we are in the final chapter of Kitab al-Riqaq from Imam al-Tabrizi's Mishkat al-Musabih. And this chapter, uh, subhanAllah, after everything he, he has brought in the book, he ends with a chapter of warning and caution. And so he calls this chapter, appropriately, Bab al-Indhar wa tahdhir the chapter of warning and of, um, of caution. And what it really means is to scare you a little bit, but also to remind you. So it's like a kind of a scary reminder in that sense. Why? Because the point is that now all these things that we've learned about through this entire book, about softening the heart, it can only take place by keeping in mind what's happening on a global level. So the individual is one thing, as we said in the last chapter, but we have to look at not only what's happening on a global level, but where things will end up in the dunya. Because the dunya and the way, it, it, that way things go is usually what sways a person whose heart is connected to Allah if they start looking around too much at the dunya. And so this is why uh, he ends perhaps with this chapter. And there are about eight hadiths left, inshallah. So we'll try to read about five of them. Fasl al-awwal. وعن عياض بن حمار المجاشعي رضي الله عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ذات يوم في خطبته ألا إن ربي أمرني أن أعلمكم ما جهلتم مما علمني يومي هذا كل كل مال نحلته عبدا حلال وإني خلقت عبادي حنفاء كله كلهم وإنهم أتتهم الشياطين فاجتالتهم عن دينهم وحرمت عليهم ما أحللت لهم وأمرت أن أن يشرك أن يشركوا بي ما لم أنزل به سلطانا وإن الله نظر إلى أهل الأرض فمقتهم عرب عربهم وعجمهم إلا بقايا من أهل الكتاب وقال وقال إنما بعثتك بعثتك لأبتليك وأبتلي بك وأبتلي بك وأنزلت عليك كتابا لا يغسله لا يغسله لا يغسله الماء تقرأه نائما ويقظان وإن الله أمرني أن أحرق قريشا فقلت ربي إذا إذا يثغ رأسي فيدعو فيدعوه خبزة قال استخرجهم كما أخرجوك وغزوهم نغزك نغزك وأنفق فسينفق عليك فس أيوة فس ينفق عليك وابعث جيشا نبعث خمسة مثله وقاتل بمن أطاعك uh, uh, so uh, this hadith, uh, in the first hadith of the chapter, is that uh, Ayad ibn Himar al-Mujashi'i said that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said one day in his sermon, Listen well, my Lord commanded me to teach you out of the things that he taught me today, that which you do not know. Allah says, every type of wealth I bestow to a servant is lawful. And I have created all of my servants to be monotheists. But the devil comes to them and turns them away from their pure religion and declares them unlawful for that which I have made lawful for them and commands them to worship, to join in worship with Allah, those which have no authoritative proof from revelation to be worshipped. Allah looked at the people of the earth and detested them, Arabs and non-Arabs both, except for some remnants among the people of the book. Allah said, I have only sent you, O Prophet, to test you and to test others through you. And I have sent down a scripture to you that, cannot wa that water cannot wash away, which you will read both while sleeping and awake. And Allah commanded me to ignite the Quraysh, to burn them. I said, O Lord, in that case, they will pound my head till they leave it like flatbread. Allah replied, expel the disbelievers of them just like they expelled you. Wage war against them and I will ready you for it. Spend in the path of Allah, so I will spend upon you. Send forth one army, and I will send five the like of it. And fight, fight using those who obey you against those who disobey you. This is narrated by uh, Imam Muslim. So SubhanAllah, um, and I have to just apologize in advance. Um, there are, there, you know, there's music in, the, in other places. There's some people moving about where I am. So Alhamdulillah, uh, if you, uh, Jazakallah khairan for being that understanding. So what is uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi saying? Uh, in, this, in this lengthy hadith, alhamdulillah, the Prophet is giving a khutbah. And he's basically saying that I'm going to teach you 
I'm going to teach you, guys, um, I'm just trying to record something. All right, boys. And what he's saying is that I'm going to teach you some things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught me today. And so this is a, a clear example of how the Prophet ﷺ receives revelation from Allah and then conveys it the way that he received it, subhanAllah. And he's also t telling us that his, his job, one of his, his main job that, that he came to do is to teach people. And so subhanAllah, he's still teaching us today because this is the passing down of his teachings. And he's saying every single piece of wealth, every single uh, wealth, which means anything that you own and you enjoy, that I have bestowed or blessed my servant with is halal. So we cannot say that anything that of this earth, we can't just make up and call it haram. So you have different places, different people from the earth and uh, you know, different people who say, oh, you see this type of food and they'll make up some myth around it, you can't eat that. Or there's a rule that you can't have this with this. Or they'll say this type of animal must be sacred and you cannot touch this type of animal. This type of animal is like that. Or this type of animal is a, a, a bad omen, for example. Um, so they'll make haram. Or for example, so any type of thing that you own and that I've given to you that, that I have not revealed anything against, it's yours, it's halal, eat it, use it the way that you wish according to the limits that I have sent. And the, uh, Allah SWT is saying that I have created my servants as hunafa, all of them. Hunafa a hanif is someone who does not deviate in left or right, go, go astray, goes in the straight way. And what this implies really is that they have been created, all people have been created ready to accept truth. And when you, subhanAllah, when you speak to a person of fitrah, fitrah is that natural disposition. When you look at what's in their hearts and you speak to them, they're ready to accept truth. A person who hasn't been corrupted by different types of ideologies and ideas and cultures. You know, and so they're ready to, people are ready to accept truth and incline away from falsehood. And what is that truth? The greatest of that truth is tawheed. This is why I, I translated this as, I have created uh, my servants as monotheists. Because that is the greatest um, marker of leaning towards truth. Not just monotheism as in like, oh, I believe in one God, but I do what I want. Believing in one God and following what that one God tells you. And then he's saying, however, devils came upon them, came to them. All the different people who have gone astray. And those devils came to them and deviated them from what they were upon through waswasa. But there are also, as we know, in Surah An-Nas, the last surah of the Quran, Allah SWT says, Min al-jinnati wa nas There are people, there are devils that whisper from the jinn, but also devils from mankind. And as some scholars said, the devils of mankind are worse than the devils of the jinn. SubhanAllah. And so they mislead people from their deen and from their religion. وَحَرَّمَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ مَا أَحَلَلْتُ لَهُمْ And they make haram what I have made halal for them. So this is what happens. They come and they make certain rules, right, through, through kufr, through disbelieving, uh, through mythology and through uh, 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 polytheism and through um, uh, paganism. And so they make haram what I have declared halal. So in, for example, the Arabs used to say this type of animal, a camel, you know, um, you can't touch this type of animal because we made them sacred. And this type of thing, we can't do this. So that none of that is true. Um, and they, the devils command that they join partners in me with that which I have not, which has not been revealed in any authoritative way. There's no proof uh, that has been, sorry, that's a helicopter. There is no proof that I have given to worship those, neither from naql, from revelation, nor through aql, nor does logic or the mind say that you should worship this thing alongside Allah. And so then Allah SWT says that, then the Prophet says that Allah looked at man, at the people of earth, at humanity, at that time, and فَمَقَتَهُمْ and, and just hated them. It means hate, it means dislike, detested them. Why? This was before Islam. Because at that time, Arabuhum wa ajimhum. And he clarified, this is not a racial thing. The Arabs and the non arabs every single race, Allah looked and just did not like humanity at that time. Why? Because they had veered from the truth. They began to oppress each other. They began to, you know, human sacrifice, um, infanticide, um, you know, uh, you know, taking, uh, taking uh, people unjustly as slaves, um, you know, uh, uh, violating the rights of women and the weak and the poor, right? All kinds of things, all types of deviances they, they were committing. And the worst of those and where it stems from is that they stopped worshipping Allah. So they had no more source of truth and revelation. And the source of goodness and truth that you see among the other nations and uh, faith groups is actually from an original revelation that Allah sent that they once had and that has trickled down. 
And this is why you see that deviance, the further you get away from the revelatory faith groups, um, the, further, the further you get from the uh, belief systems and the morals of Islam and, and, and goodness. And so he's saying, then Allah says, accept. He detested everyone who was on the earth for what they were doing, you know, generally speaking. Accept a group of remnants from the people of the book. And, terms, and they say that before the coming of the Prophet Sallallahu this was the uh, last remaining followers of Isa, Isa of Jesus, who were still on his message that had not changed with the majority of the people of their co-religionists. And so then the Prophet, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells the Prophet, I have only sent you to try you and to try others through you, SubhanAllah. So here is the Habib of Allah. The Prophet is the most beloved of Allah. And, the, and Allah is telling the Prophet, I have only sent you to try you. How? Through giving you a message to convey to others and through keeping patience with how people abuse you for sending them that message. And so the Prophet was, is tried first. It's not a religion of luxury where the founder gets to be, you know, uh, live like, live like a, a, a king and everyone else is like, you know, in a difficult situation. The Prophet's test came first and try others through you through this message and through having to choose, are you with the truth or against the truth? Are you with Allah or against Allah? And so then Allah, then Allah says, and I have sent upon you a great scripture, a book, right? And that, uh, that book, that water cannot wash it. And so it's interesting, what does it mean by water cannot wash it? That, um, you know, when you had a scroll, for example, or if you've seen, for example, in some countries like in Mauritania or even in some places in Yemen, they still write on a slate and they have ink and they write the Quran on that. Because in the olden days, people would write with ink on, uh, on, um, on a slate or uh, on parchment or on dried leather or bones. And if you just put a little bit of water on it, the whole thing would just get washed away. And so what Allah is saying is this book is not just going to be washed away like ink on, on paper or ink on a slate. It's not like the previous books that came and then got changed so easily. Rather, Allah is saying that water will not wash it away. It will be preserved in the hearts of humanity. The believers will preserve it, right? And they will memorize it and um, they will act upon it. And taqra'uhu na'iman wa I'm going to send you a scripture that you will recite while you're sleeping and while you're awake. SubhanAllah. So, I mean, we do know that people can recite the Quran even while sleeping. That's the literal understanding of it. That is possible. So, that, but, what, but what the ulama say here is that the eyes of the Prophet slept, but the heart did not sleep. And so it comes so deep inside you that it will always be in your heart. Even when you're sleeping, you won't be forgetting it. It won't sound like something that goes away with memory. It's something that's in your heart. And just imagine the revelation sent to a prophet. What is revelation like? It's not like memorization. It's something imprinted in your soul and your heart. He says, you're gonna rep, you will, you will recite it while sleeping and while awake. And Allah SWT commanded me, and has commanded me that I burn Quraysh, that I ignite them, I light them up. What does it mean here? It doesn't literally mean to burn them down. What it means is that um, the disbelieving people who are the oppressors, who are the wrongdoers, the war criminals, the people who are blocking from the truth, Allah has said to, to, uh, to destroy those people, right? And not by burning ever, that's just a word being used like, you know, you, to ignite them, to light them up. It means to, to, um, to destroy them and to deal with them. Um, and then when the Prophet got that command, that, you know, this, this, the most mighty tribe in Arabia, I want you to, to, to fight against the wrongdoers of them. Allah says, yeah, but Allah, that then if the, in that case, they will pound my head, you know, until they make it as flat as bread, because bread is flat. We have loaves of bread, bread to them was flat bread. And they will pound my head, like, what's going to happen to me? Because he knows that he's just one person. So at this time, it, it's a natural um, uh, question. The how will I deal with this? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is where Allah uh, then sends the consolation and the promise. So you take them out the way that they took you out of Medina and uh, declare wage war on them. Go to fight them because they are not changing their ways and they're continuing to oppress, uh, cause oppression and evil in the world. And so he's telling the Prophet Muhammad, just go do this and then I will prepare you for it. And then Allah is saying, if you spend in my path, and to spread this message to the, the, this good news of Islam that saves people and brings them out of hellfire and into heaven, I will spend on you in this world and the next world. Don't worry that you don't have money, you're, you're, you don't have power. Allah is saying, go into this by yourself because I'm with you, you're not alone. And if you send one army forth, no matter how small, get some people together to oppose those who do wrong, I will send five. How? Not by the angels. And this is where Allah says in the Quran that the angels will come down 
3,000, 5,000, 10,000, angels would come down to help you. And not only that, but it was also the people of the world came into Islam to help the message of the Prophet ﷺ. And says, and fight those who fight with those who obey you against those who disobey you, right? This is where it all comes down to. Who obeys the Prophet as, and against those who disobey the Prophet That's another, another And so, and so this is the, this is, why is this heart, so, how, the heart softening hadith, how, how is this coming up that the trials will come, but the Prophet was the first one. Right, and we are. Our job is to spread this deen. Our job is to convey the message, and Allah's help will come when we're doing this. Right, and um, well, and the next hadith, وعن ابن عباس رضي الله عنه قال لما لما uh, لما نزلت وأنذر عشيرتك الأقربين سعد سعد النبي صلى الله سعد النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الصفا فجعل ينادي يا بني فهر يا بني عدي لبطون قريش حتى اجتمعوا فقال أرأيت أرأيت أرأيتكم أيوة أرأيتكم لو أخبرتم أن خيرا بالوادي تريد أن تغير عليكم أكنتم صديقية قالوا نعم قالوا نعم ما جربنا عليك إلا صدقا قال فإني نذير لكم بين يدي عذاب ش بين يدي عذاب شديد فقال أبو لهب تبا لك سائل اليوم ألي هذا جمعتنا فنزلت تبت يدا أبي لهب وتب متفق عليه وفي رواية النا في رواية النادى يا بني عبد مناف إنما مثلي ومثلك ومثلك ومثلكم كمثل رجل رع العدو فانطلق يربع يربع أهله فخشي أن يسبقوه فجعل يحتف يا صح يا يا صحباه يا صباحا يا صباحا ابن عباس رضي الله عنه said that when the verse and warn the closest of your related tribes people came down, right? This is war and warn the closest of your related tribes, your tribe or your family members came down. The Prophet, peace be upon him, climbed Mount Safa and began to call out, O descendants of Fihr, O Banu Fihr. It literally means children of, but it's descendants. O descendants of Adi. For all the clans of Quraysh, he named them till they gathered together. He said, what do you think if I informed you that uh, uh, that uh, a contingent of horsemen or an army were in the valley intending to, to attack you by surprise. Would you believe me? They replied, yes, we have never experienced anything but truthfulness from you. He continued, then I am a warner sent to you, coming just ahead of a severe torment. So Abu Lahab cried, may destruction be upon you for the rest of your days. Is this what you gathered us for? So the verse came down, may the two hands of Abu Lahab be destroyed and may he be destroyed. Narrated by Bukhari and Muslim. And in a narration, he called out, Prophet ﷺ called out, O descendants of Abdul Manaf, this is his family now, you and I are like the example of a man who sees the enemy host, so he rushes to save his family, dreading that the enemy right, might reach them before he, before he does. So he starts to shout from the highest mountain, enemy attack, literally surprise attack by dawn. SubhanAllah. So what is the, what's being said here? The Prophet ﷺ said, Bismillah. So Ibn Abbas who said that when the when the verse which is in Surah uh, Ash-Shu'ara wa anzir ashiratak al-aqrabin was revealed, the Prophet climbed up. This is in the beginning of Islam, the very beginning of Islam, after uh, some time after receiving revelation, after the quiet period of revelation, uh, he climbed up on Mount Safa and he started to call out from Mount Safa, saying, and he called out the different. First, he called Banu Fihr. Who's Banu Fihr? It's Quraysh. Quraysh is known as Banu Fihr. Because the ancestor of Quraysh, if you go back 10 generations to the Prophet's ancestry, the 10th generation uh, at grandfather, uh, you know, forefather is Quraysh. But his real name is Fihr. And Fihr is actually the, um, the uh, forefather of all of Quraysh. So actually all of the people of Mecca are actually only 10 generations apart from each other, which is a lot, but you know. And um, in those 10 generations, because they're one tribe, so he's calling out first, oh, uh, ch children or descendants of Fihr, uh, Adi, and he's calling different tribes and he called them one by one and he got, got them to gather because this is how you get people's attention. And then he, he said to them, what do you think if I was to tell you that there's an army behind this mountain, would you believe me? And he said, of course, because we've never experienced except truth from, from you, truthfulness. He never lied in his life, right? And so everyone believed and trusted what he said. He's trying to establish. So what is he doing here? And this is a lesson for us. He's bringing them onto a common ground. 
First, he's addressing each group of people by the name that they identify with. So he's calling people by how they would identify themselves, right? And that's a, that's a type of respect. Not just saying everyone, everyone. He's calling different groups of people by what they like to be called and what they identify with. And he's saying that um, first bringing them onto a common ground. He could have just said, you know, beware of the hellfire. I'm the messenger of Allah. He didn't. First he asked, do, will, do you, will you believe me if I told you this? And so he's establishing, number one, the proof of his truthfulness. Number two, he is getting common ground. Number three, whenever you're trying to convince someone, always, always get them to say yes as much as possible before they have to say yes or no, right? And so then he's saying that in the same way that you have an army behind a mountain and you would want me to tell you if there was a huge type of destruction that's about to come. And so in the same way, I'm trying to tell you something. I am a warner sent to you, right? And I'm coming ahead of a great chastisement, which is the hellfire. And this is where Abu Lahab said, and this is his own uncle. Who is Abu Lahab? Right? Uh, Abu Lahab, as we know, is uh, uh, Abdul Uzza. Right? And he was the, the brother of his father, Abdullah. He was his paternal uncle. And uh, Abu Lahab is just his nickname, the father of flame. Why? Because that will be his punishment in the, in the hellfire in the surah of um, uh, Surah Lahab. We, we know this. And so this is where Abu Lahab said, no, perhaps out of embarrassment that my own nephew is causing this commotion. And he said, uh, may, may you perish. This is what you're calling him. May you be destroyed. It was a type of terminology. But this is what he said. He said, this is what you gathered us for. <coughs> and this is why the Prophet Sallallahu uh, then it was revealed to him, Surah Lahab, that may the hands of Abu, Abu Lahab be destroyed and, may, and he is destroyed, right? And that's where that um, came down. And uh, this is from Bukhari and Muslim. And then in another narration, as we know, he, uh, it's, it's a very similar uh, type of narration. So the Prophet ﷺ is saying that the warning and the deen that he's giving us is as if he's standing on a mountain telling us of a surprise attack. Why? Because death will come very quickly. The punishment of Allah comes very quickly. And so th what should soften our hearts at this point is that we have to live our lives under the idea that this world will deceive us. And this world has many temptations. And it will all try to take us away from our faith slowly. And we have to live our lives in such a way that we are conscious of this message and not let people and cultures and civilizations change us, right? And in the next hadith, وَعَنْ أَبِي هُرَيَةَ رَضِي اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَنْهُ قَالْ لَمَّا نَزَلَتْ وَأَنْذِرَ شِرَتِكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ دَعَى النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ قُرَيْشٍ فَاجْتَمَعُوا فَعَمَّا وَخَصَّ فَقَالْ يَا بَنِي يَا بَنِي كَعْبِ ابْنِ لُؤَيْ أَنْقِذُوا أَنْفُسَكُمْ مِنَ النَّارِ يَا بَنِي مُرَّ بِنِ كَعْبٍ أَنْقِذُوا أَنْفُسَكُمْ مِنَ النَّارِ يَا بَنِي عَبْدِ الشَّمْسِ أَنْقِذُوا أَنْفُسَكُمْ مِنَ النَّارِ يَا بَنِي عَبْدِ يَا يَا بَنِي عَبْدِ مَنَافِ أَنْقِذُوا أَنْفُسَكُمْ مِنَ النَّارِ يَا بَنِي هَاشِمْ أَنْقِذُوا أَنْفُسَكُمْ مِنَ النَّارِ يَا بَنِي عَبْدِ الْمُطَّلِبِ أَنْقِذُوا أَنْفُسَكُمْ مِنَ النَّارِ يَا فَاطِمَةُ أَنْقِذِي نَفْسَكِ مِنَ النَّارِ فَإِنِّي لَا أَمْلِكُ لَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا غَيْرَ أَنَّ لَكُمْ رَحِمًا سَأَبُلُّهَا بِبَلَالِهَا بِبِلَالِهَا رَهُ مُسْلِمٌ وَفِي الْمُتَّفَقِّينَ عَلَيْهِ وَفِي الْمُتَّفَقِّينَ عَلَيْهِ قَالَ يَا مَعْشَرُ قُرَيْشٍ اشْتَرُوا اشْتَرُوا أَنْفُسَكُمْ لَا أُغْنِي عَنْ لَا أُغْنِي عَنْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا وَيَا بَنِي عَبْدِ مَنَافِ لَا أُغْنِي عَنْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا يَا عَبَّاسُ بْنُ عَبْدِ الْمُطَّلِبِ لَا أُغْنِي عَنْكَ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا يَا صَفِيَّةُ عَمَّةَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ لَا أُغْنِي عَنْكِ شَيْئًا مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا يَا فَاطِمَةُ بِنْتُ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ سَلِيلِي مَا شِئْتِ مِنْ مَالِي لَا أُغْنِي عَنْكِ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْئًا سُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ a similar a similar narration and a similar idea Abu Hurairah said رضي الله عنه when the verse and warned the nearest of your related tribes people came down the Prophet peace be upon him called the Quraysh generally calling everyone and calling specific people and tribes as well so they could gather he said O descendants of Ka'b ibn Lu'ay save yourselves from the fire O descendants of Murra bin Ka'b save yourselves from the fire O descendants of Abdul Shams save yourselves from the fire uh, O descendants of Abdul Manaf, save yourself from the fire. O descendants of Hashim, save yourselves from the fire. O Fatima, save yourself from the fire. For I do not have, for I do not control anything over Allah for your sake, other than our family relationship, which I will honor and maintain in this world. This is narrated by Imam Muslim, and in the narration in both Bukhari and Muslim, uh, he said, "O gathering of Quraysh, save yourselves. I cannot help you in front of Allah with anything. O Safiya, aunt of the Messenger of Allah." I cannot help you in front of Allah with anything. O Fatima, daughter of Muhammad, ask me for whatever you wish of my wealth, 
but I cannot help you in front of Allah with anything. SubhanAllah. So, um, Allahu Akbar. So what's being said, the Prophet ﷺ, here is a similar ayah, a similar, uh, the same ayah comes down, it's a similar narration, but here the Prophet ﷺ is uh, calling, he, he starts with the general tribe, and then he goes closer and closer, more specific, down the generations, uh, to his own family. And he's showing that not only is he calling Quraysh that are distant relatives, but he's calling those who are close, because someone might say, oh, so what, you and your family get a free pass? You want to warn everyone else? So he's going to his own family members. And he calls first his cousins. Then he calls his own uncle. He calls his aunt. Right? He calls then finally he finishes with his own daughter. And he's saying, I cannot help you with Allah, uh, from Allah. What does it mean? It doesn't mean that there's no benefit. Billah, there's no benefit. But if you do not accept this message, I cannot change the decree of Allah. If Allah decides to punish you, I cannot. I don't have power and control over Allah to do that. And so this is why he's saying that I cannot enrich you. It means literally enrich you. I cannot help you over Allah. When he decides to punish you, I will not be able to change that. Now the intercession is for those who believe, right? But still the will of Allah is what dominates that. It's the will of Allah alone. And then he says, um, O Fatima bint Muhammad, right? That, um, you know, and then he's telling everyone else that don't think that even you're my daughter, but you still have to follow this message. Because I will ask me for anything in this world. You want money, you want anything I own, take it. But I cannot give you a guarantee of salvation if you do not believe in La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And then he's also saying that there's no way that, um, however, we do have a family relationship, right, in this world. And all I can do is try to, to, you know, to honor and maintain those family ties by calling you to Islam. So do we ourselves honor our family relations and give the best impression of Islam and spread the message to our own families and our communities, right? This is a lesson to soften our hearts that at the end of the day, it's not just about ourselves, it's about calling others and it's about sincere concern. And this is how the heart remains soft. Once sincere concern and calling others through our example sometimes and our words if we're qualified to do it, if that goes away, then our hearts become hard. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala soften our hearts. Um, inshallah, I will, let's see, will we have any more to read today? It's getting dark. Bismillah. Okay, we'll try to we'll try to do one more, inshallah. Wan Abi Abi Musa, رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أمة هذه أمة مرحومة ليس عليها عذاب في الآخرة عذابها في الدنيا الفتن والزلازل والقتل رواه أبو داود. سبحان الله. And it's very um, this is a, it's سبحان الله. This hadith is it's a heavy it's heavy to, to, to but it's it's light in many ways. And heavy, as you'll see in some ways. Abu Musa said, and this is the balance. Abu Musa said, anhu, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, This spiritual community of mine, this ummah of mine, is one that has been showered, is an ummah that has been showered with divine mercy. It's ummatun marhuma. It has had mercy, it had divine mercy come down on it. It has no divine punishment in the hereafter. Its punishment will be in this world by civil strife and trials and earthquakes and killing. SubhanAllah. And in this hadith, brief hadith, but um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing the favor that he has given to this ummah and the special status this ummah has in the eyes of Allah. The ummahs before do not have this special status. Where the ummah itself, anyone who is part of this ummah, what does it mean? It doesn't mean that no one will be punished for a sin that they do. It means that this ummah, the people who are truly part of the ummah, they will have a reward for their belief and they will not be punished eternally in the hereafter um, uh, because they have belief. Right? And so this is why um, the Iman that we have is the greatest gift that we have from Allah. And whereas those who disbelieve in Allah and knowingly reject the message, they will be in this hellfire and punishment. However, there are still things that we do wrong as an ummah. There are still many things. Just look at the Muslim world, look at our own lives first. And then look at around us. There are many things that we do wrong that you know Allah can choose to forgive or Allah can punish out of His justice. And we, we, how do we pay for many of those uh, those sins, how do we pay that? Not necessarily through hellfire, but Allah will bring it forward. And this is why He says that the punishment of this ummah will be in this world through fitan. And when you look at the world today, fitna is um, not only trials and temptations, but it's a word for civil strife. Because it's tempting to get involved on either side. And how many countries do we see where Muslims are fighting other Muslims? SubhanAllah, Muslims of one sect destroying each other, different countries attacking each other. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and help all the Muslims. If 
Now, why do we hear this? And also by earthquakes and uh, also the, the natural disasters of the Muslim world and um, also by bloodshed and killing, right? Not only by outside uh, war, we've had colonialism, we've had war, uh, neo-colonialism, uh, we have occupations and oppressions and, and um, you know, there are just so many different types of uh, acts of violence being committed on the Muslim woman. Now, why, why hear this in one sense? Why, like, listen, why tell us this, let's say? Because in some senses, it is a test of Iman uh, when you hear what's going on in the Ummah. When you see, you know, many times people who are trying to quote-unquote disprove Islam or put it down will come to Muslims and say, ha, huh, look at you guys, you guys are fighting each other. You have the truth. And it affects the Iman of many innocent Muslims. Say, so you, guys, you guys say you have the truth, look at how you guys are fighting and killing each other. Or look at all the disasters. Whenever a disaster happened, you know, earthquakes or some tsunami or something, they'll say, people, the detractors will say, where is your God now? Where is your Allah, where is your Allah now? And um, when you look at the wars that are happening from outside, you think, oh Allah, why is this happening? And so it shakes the faith of many people. But Allah is saying from 1400 years ago on the tongue of the Prophet, this is why it should soften our hearts and increase our iman. That at the end of the day, Allah is, the Prophet is saying, this is going to happen. This is a prophecy. This is a tr sign of truth of Islam. So those fitan and the, and the Muslims fighting Muslims that you see, it's sad, it's horrible. We pray to Allah to take it away from us and, and, and that it stops. And we do everything to stop it. But it's a sign of the truth of the Messenger Wasallam, saying, this is the way. If we do not stand up for the, the responsibility of la ilaha illallah, this is the way that we are asking for our, our sins to, to, for our punishment. And this is a mercy, because the punishment, the eternal punishment in the hereafter is much, much worse. And if we look around and we say, you know, why didn't Allah stop this uh, natural disaster or earthquake? We say, this is a, a way of punishing us in this world before the next. May Allah save us. May Allah protect us. May Allah make it easy. May Allah tawfiq wa taysir. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, save us from this. But this is something that when we look around the world, we have to, we have to realize what Allah is telling us. So, instead of being among those who deserve a punishment in this world, let us try to become those who ask Allah's forgiveness. Tawbah is the biggest thing. More than doing anything right is doing, is just making tawbah for what we've done wrong. You know, may Allah forgive us and may Allah protect us and make it easy for us. Inshallah, it's getting dark, so we'll stop now. Jazakallah khairan. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Last class will be the final uh, recording, inshallah, if Allah gives us life and tawfiq, inshallah, may Allah protect um, you and all of us, inshallah, and um, protect us from saying these things and uh, being shown the hard way um, because we didn't follow them. May Allah protect us. And anyone who's listening to this, I request um, that we all make a fatiha right now with the intention of shifa for um, for anyone who's been injured, anyone who's sick or suffering, inshallah, and whatever intention we have in mind. I have someone in my mind and in, in my intention I love very much. And uh, you can all join me in that intention. But the niyyah of shifa for, uh, for that person and everyone else inshallah who is suffering or hurt and who are sick al fatiha thank you for listening this podcast was brought to you by seekers guidance the global islamic seminary visit seekersguidance.org to access reliable islamic knowledge taught by qualified teachers we offer a wide range of courses podcasts articles and a world class answer service Support us in spreading free, reliable Islamic knowledge to millions around the world by becoming a monthly supporter. Visit seekersguidance.org forward slash donate and make a small monthly commitment today. Our beloved Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever guides someone to goodness will have a similar reward. So don't forget to share this podcast and spread prophetic guidance.